In this example, we're going to use area models to multiply mixed numbers. The area model is a large rectangle and it's split up into sections. We're going to take our two factors, three and one half and two and two fifths, and we're going to label each side of the rectangle with the factors. When we do this, we're going to split the whole number from the fraction. So on top, we're going to label three and one half, and on the side, we're going to label two and two fifths. It doesn't actually matter which factor you label on which side, but I chose three and one half because it's larger and the length of this rectangle is longer. Now that our whole numbers and fractions are separated, we're going to multiply each part of our first factor by each part of our second factor. In the top left section of our rectangle, we're going to multiply our two whole numbers, two and three, and we get a product of six. In the top right section, we're going to multiply the two that's to the left times the one half that is above, and two times one half is two halves. So I'm going to type that in the purple fraction, but two halves can be simplified into one whole. So I'm going to type one whole in the yellow box, and because it is one whole, it doesn't have a fraction that goes with it, so I'm going to delete that text box. Next, we're going to multiply three by two fifths. This is in the bottom left section of the rectangle, and three times two fifths equals six fifths which is shown in the purple box, but six-fifths can be simplified into one and one-fifth. Whenever we have an improper fraction, we always want to turn it into a mixed number. And finally, we're going to multiply two-fifths times one-half, which is two-tenths, and two-tenths can also be simplified into one-fifth. Once you have the product of each section of the area model, you're going to add up all of the products to get the final product. All of the whole numbers are lined up and all of the fractions are lined up. Both of the fractions in our addition problem are out of fifths, so we don't have to change them into equivalent fractions, and we can just add them together. We start with the fractions first, and we add one fifth and one fifth, which gives us two fifths, and then we add the whole numbers. So six plus one plus one is eight, and our answer is eight and two fifths. This is our final answer because our fraction is in its simplest form, and it doesn't need to be reduced, so we'll record the final answer in the bottom right section of the slide. I wanted to give you a second example, and in this example, at the end, we're actually going to have to make equivalent fractions. So in this problem, we're multiplying five and two thirds by one and one fourth. We'll start with labeling the edges of our rectangle. On top, we're going to put five and then the two thirds separating them. And on the left side, we will put one and one fourth separated. First, we'll find the area of the top left box by multiplying one and five, and our product is five. Next, we'll multiply the numbers in the top right section, and we have one times two thirds, which is two thirds. I'm going to delete the text box Box from the whole number box in the yellow section and our final answer for that box will just be two-thirds. In the bottom left section we'll multiply five times one-fourth which is five-fourths and we'll turn that into a mixed number one and one-fourth. In our bottom right section, we're multiplying one fourth times two-thirds which is two-twelfths and we're going to reduce that to one-sixth. Now we're going to record all of the products into the addition area of the slide. You can either put a zero for any whole numbers or fractions that you don't need, or you can delete the text box. Because our fractions are out of thirds, fourths, and sixths, we have to find a common denominator for all three numbers. In this case, our common denominator is going to be 12. So we'll keep five the way it is, then we'll change two thirds into eight twelfths, one and one fourth will become one and three twelfths, and one sixth will become two twelfths. When we add it all together, we get 13 twelfths for our fraction and six for our whole number, but we don't wanna have an improper fraction, so 13 twelfths is the same as one and one twelfth, which we will add to six, and then our final answer is seven and one twelfth. 